Hello class, Mr. Linder here. Let's talk about secretion. So secretion is an important mechanism that we see that happens in the kidneys, uh, specifically with the nephron system. When we study the nephron system, uh, we focus on filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. And secretion, it turns out, is an important mechanism to remove molecules from our blood and put them back into the nephron so that we can have excretion. Let's take a closer look at the nephron and talk about these basic processes, uh, and then we'll look at a very specific mechanism for secretion. So what we have in the nephron system is really a system of tubules that we can draw here on the screen. And so you'll recognize these anatomical parts. And so when we talk about the nephron functionality, we usually look at the blood coming into uh, the Bowman's cap capsule, and we have the glomerulus, and then we have the blood going out. So the blood coming in comes through what's called an afferent arteriole, and then we have the glomerulus, and then we have the efferent arterial. And surrounding that glomerulus is the Bowman's capsule or glomerular uh, capsule. And the mechanism that we focus on here is filtration. So we'll put letter F. As we have filtrate entering into the nephron system, okay, we process that filtrate. And what we're doing oftentimes is removing things from the nephron tubes back into the blood or back into the circulatory system. So we have blood vessels that come around and wrap around the uh, tubules of the nephron and we can have the process that we call reabsorption take place where we move molecules from the filtrate uh, back into the blood. But we also have a mechanism of secretion where we can take molecules that are in the blood and we can put them into the nephron system so we can secrete them. So if we have a blood vessel moving along here, we can secrete into various locations. So secretion can happen in the proximal convoluted tubule, and we can also have secretion in the distal uh, convoluted tubule. And this mechanism will take molecules or ions from the blood uh, and put them back into the nephron system. So if we were to look at the entire process that's taking place in the nephron, we might have an equation that looks like this. Filtration, using a blood pressure, moves material, filtrate, into the nephron system. If we take material out of the filtrate and put it back into the blood, that's minus reabsorption. Okay? And then if we add things back to the nephron system, that would be plus secretion. And this collectively equals excretion. So what we filter minus what we reabsorb plus what we secrete is going to determine what we excrete from the body. So the more secretion that you have, the more excretion you'll have. The more filtration you have okay, can lead to more excretion. If you put both of them together, lots of filtration and lots of secretion, you're going to enhance your overall excretion uh, from the body as long as there's not too much reabsorption. Remember, reabsorption is putting it back into the body. So secretion can actually enhance the excretion of something. And so there's a, a very important mechanism uh, of secretion called the organic anion transporter uh, mechanism. Now, there can be secretion uh, of a lot of different things. There can be secretion of potassium. There can be secretion of hydrogen ions. Uh, and, and those processes are different than what we see with the organic anion transporter system. Even though it's secretion, taking them out of the blood and putting them into the nephron, uh, there's still different mechanisms. And so you can take a look at other videos that show you secretion of potassium or secretion of hydrogen ions. This particular mechanism, the OAT system, organic anion transporter system, actually takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule. So even though there is secretion in the distal convoluted tubule as well, the OAT system is in the proximal convoluted tubule. So what's happening in organic anion transportation or using these OAT transporters? 
Well, what you're doing is you're removing organic anions from the blood, putting them into the nephron so that you can have excretion. So what are some examples of organic anions? Well, these O transporters are actually uh, able to move a wide variety of molecules. So they're not highly specific. Uh, they're specific for organic anions, uh, but there are lots of organic anions that we can secrete from our blood into the nephron. Uh, for example, uh, I listed some organic anions for you. Uh, benzoate is a food preservative, uh, and that's actually secreted through the oat system. Uh, aspirin, salicylic acid, uh, is an organic anion that is secreted. Uh, saccharin, uh, which is an artificial sweetener uh, is secreted. Uh, penicillin, we know that as an antibiotic, uh, that's secreted uh, using the oat system. Uh, organophosphates, uh, these would be things like uh, fertilizers, some fertilizers. Uh, this would be uh, things that can be found in nerve gas. Uh, so these organic phosphate molecules can also be uh, secreted using the oat system, the organic anion transporter system. So let's take a closer look at the proximal convoluted tubule. So what I want to do is I want to zoom in on a portion uh, of the proximal convoluted tubule so that we can look at both the uh, lumen uh, of the nephron. Uh, we can also look at the epithelial cells, uh, these cuboidal epithelial cells that line uh, the lumen. And then we can also connect that uh, over here to our blood. So just to orientate yourself, so we have blood on this side, and then we have the lumen of the nephron uh, on the left-hand side, uh, and then these are essentially proximal convoluted tubule uh, epithelial cells. And so if we're talking about secretion, we want to be able to get something from the blood into the lumen. So we want to move from the blood uh, into the lumen, and that is the secretion uh, mechanism. So how do we do that, though? What is the process of using an oat transporter uh, to get something from the blood uh, into the nephron? Well, this process is actually known as a tertiary transporter system. We've talked a bit about primary active transport and secondary active transport. This is actually a tertiary or third level uh, active transport mechanism. And so how does this system uh, set up? Well, in order for it to work, there needs to be a primary active transporter. And so this first transporter that I'm drawing is a primary active transporter. And in the primary active transporter, it's a sodium potassium pump. So we know in the sodium potassium pump, we move sodium in one direction out of the cell, and then we move potassium in the other direction. And so sodium going out, potassium going in. That sodium in the blood can then be used to power a secondary transporter. Okay, so the secondary level, okay, we have a secondary transporter. Well, what is that secondary transporter doing? Sodium is actually coming back into the cell. Okay, so sodium is going to move along its concentration gradient. And as sodium moves along its concentration gradient, it's bringing along with it what are called dicarboxylates. So I'm going to put DC here for dicarboxylates. Dicarboxylates are going to be things like citric acid. Uh, they're going to be things like alpha keto glutaric acid. Okay? Uh, lactic acid would even fall into this category. Um, oxaloacetic acid oxaloacetic acid, okay? So a lot of these names might sound familiar, citric acid, alpha-ketoglutaric acid, oxaloacetic acid. Uh, these are actually molecules from the Krebs cycle. Okay. So it turns out that the Krebs cycle uh, is producing these dicarboxylates, and these dicarboxylates are in our blood but they're actually also being produced within the epithelial cells as well. So you've got dicarboxylates that are produced uh, within the epithelial cell. You're even going to have dicarboxylates in the lumen of the nephron. And those dicarboxylates can actually be transported into the epithelial cell as well. 
And so what's happening with this primary and secondary transport is you're actually increasing the concentration of dicarboxylates inside the proximal convoluted tubule cells. Okay, so we're increasing the dicarboxylate levels inside of the cell. So we have a primary transporter that moves sodium out of the cell. We have a secondary transporter that's bringing sodium into the cell, and that's bringing dicarboxylates into the cell as well. Dicarboxylates are being produced inside the epithelial cell, and then we even have reabsorption of dicarboxylates into the epithelial cell. By increasing the concentration of the dicarboxylates, we can now move to the third level or the tertiary, right? Tertiary level, third level, and we can look at the organic anion secretion. So what happens? In order for this third level to function, this is your organic anion transporter, this tertiary level, what you see happening is the dicarboxylates okay, are going to move out of the epithelial cell in exchange for organic anions that are in your blood. And again, those organic anions come in a lot of different forms, a lot of variety. It could be a penicillin, could be a benzoate, could be uh, a pesticide, okay, some organophosphate. And that's going to come into the epithelial cell. So the dicarboxylate is going out and the organic anion is coming in. But in order to get that organic anion into the epithelial cell, right, to remove it from the blood and getting it into the epithelial cell, it took a primary transporter and a secondary transporter before you could run the tertiary transporter. So we had to move sodium at the beginning and then we use sodium to concentrate our dicarboxylates inside of the epithelial cell. And then the dicarboxylates can diffuse out as the organic anion comes in. That's an antiport mechanism. Once the organic anion gets into the epithelial cell, then you can use another type of oat. Okay, so this is another type of oat okay, on the... Um, on the basal side of the cell, uh, lining up with the lumen of the nephron. And what we have going on here is we have, uh, actually I said that wrong, this would be the apical side lining the lumen. So on the apical side uh, lining the lumen, uh, what we have here is the organic anion being able to move through that oat into the nephron lumen in exchange for even more dicarboxylates right, coming back into the cell. So we have another oat transport system here where it's an antiport where the dicarboxylate comes in and the organic anion goes out. Once the organic anions are in the nephron lumen, you have thus secreted them. Okay? So secretion has taken place. You were able to move them from the blood into the nephron lumen and now they're destined for excretion. Okay? Once, it's been, um, once it's been secreted, then it's destined for excretion. So what we've been looking at here is the organic anion transporter mechanism. And that again takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule as a secretion mechanism to move organic anions from the blood back into the nephron so that we can have excretion of those organic anions. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps. Take care.